fun to drive. Yeah, right? The cam really starts to come on at 45 to 65. Yeah. You really feel it, right? You run over a dime and you can tell if it's head or tail. <laughs> Jay Leno's Garage, the car we're featuring today, 1973 BMW 2002. I have a soft spot for these because when I was in college, I worked at a place called Foreign Motors in Boston, and we sold BMW, Peugeot, Mercedes-Benz, Rolls-Royce, Bentley, anything foreign, it, because it sounds funny now, but those were foreign cars. And the BMW was just starting to hit its stride. The 1600 had come out, it was a huge hit and then the 2002 and the TII. Uh, this is what I call part of our street grab series. Sometimes when I'm out driving around, I see a car I like, I furiously flag down the owner and say, hi, I love your car, tell me about it, you wanna be on the show. And I was at the Auto Books, which is a bookstore in Burbank where people congregate on the weekends. And I saw it parked there. It, as you can see, it stands out. Uh, if you're a cop, you're not gonna miss this. If it's going 66 and a 65, you're probably gonna get a ticket because it's just, uh, you see it coming. The owner, his name is Dorian Hicklin, and he's done the restoration on this. He's knowledgeable about the car. So let's find out about it. Dorian, come on in. How you doing, Jay? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Yeah, I saw him at the bookstore, and I said, hey, let's do this, and he said, sure, so I appreciate <laughs> that. So what did you start with? Was it a project car? Was it a completely stock car you modified? Tell us about it. This was actually a car that a friend of mine had owned up in the Bay Area. And uh, he had it for many years and it kind of sat outside, went inside, outside. And uh, I always really was fond of the car and wanted to do a cafe kind of B sedan, backdate build. Right. And with this car, we negotiated a deal after many years and uh, finally I went and picked it up. It was kind of in a sad, worn state, so this had a full frame-off rotisserie restoration. Now stock, it was a four-cylinder with a two-liter? Two-liter, correct. Two-liter, and I think the stock horsepower was, what, 125, something like that? The TII uh, was 125, but the stock was probably around 95 to 100 horsepower. I know, it sounds almost funny now, it's so little, it's like motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> right. But this was considered so fast and so good handling back in the day. Correct. I mean, especially in New England, people love them. Every Vermont English literature professor smoked a pipe and drove either a Saab <laughs> or one of these because it just had a cool factor. Because there really were no sporty small sedans that could hold four people. You got a Falcon or a Comet or a Valiant or something or Volkswagen, which really wasn't that either. This was really one of the only, Fiat maybe, but this had the German quality and the German build and was just fantastic to drive. By 73, it's probably a five-speed, correct? Yeah, five-speed actually was kind of an option, but most of them were four-speed. Right. So this actually has a five-speed from right. a 320 BMW. Oh, okay. And okay. also a uh, 390 limited diff as well from a 320. Okay, now obviously with the exception of taking the bumpers off and some of the trim, you haven't modified the body a whole lot, but I imagine everything else is pretty much... Correct, uh, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, there's been a lot of uh, little uh, nuances and touches that we've added to this from the interior to suspension and a lot of things that uh, may has not been done in a lot of these BMW 2002s, I think. Well, can we open the hood? Let's Absolutely. see what we got. Pull the pin here. Yeah. Sometimes you got to press down a little bit. There you go. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, very pretty, yeah, beautifully done, nicely detailed. I'm, I'm always amazed at the size of alternators from this period, because it's like almost half the size of the engine block. Now you can get a little Mitsubishi, it weighs about five pounds, puts out probably twice with that. Yeah, you, you told me about that. That yeah. might be a uh, future upgrade. Yeah, because that's probably five pounds, isn't it? Yeah, they're kind of heavy. And it's kind of hanging over the, the front there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. What size Webers are those? These are uh, dual 45s. Okay. 
Yeah, so you know you get that nice sound when you get on the gas. Right, right. Now, is it uh, still two liter or is it two point two or you got anything to that? This is a board twenty over. Okay. So we wanted to give it a little more juice. It right. has a two ninety two cam. Right. Uh, heavy duty lifter springs and and uh, valves, and we have the rocker locks on it. But it's not too my, uh, wild, and I wanted to kind of keep it more in that traditional B sedan type. So what are we making, about 175, something like 150? I, I haven't dynoed it yet because yeah. the car just got finished, but I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's a solid probably 150. Yeah. Maybe yeah. 160, yeah. but 150 seems about right. And I always love these aftermarket braces. This is, who is that from? That's a nice piece. So this is a, a company called Mason Engineering, um, which is actually made in the valley here, um, but they don't make them for the 2002s anymore, unfortunately. So I took this off of one of my other cars. Oh, really? I yeah. wonder why. I mean... I'd love to buy another one, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a nicely made piece. Mm -hmm. I suppose you could make one if you were... Sure, yeah. But, uh, wow, I'm surprised you'd think that would be just the first thing a BMW buyer would want. Yeah, they still make them for E30s and other cars, but right. for some reason, not the 2002 anymore. And I love these old school fuses. I remember you could actually open the hood. Oh, I have a blown fuse, thank you. Now you've got to crawl underneath and open some stupid door you can't find, which is behind an ashtray. Agreed. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, these are always so convenient. And these old style fuses, when they do, oh, oh, yeah. okay, it's not connected, there you go. Yeah, nice they are suit. really easy to work on and convenient. What gauge is this for? This is the vacuum gauge? Yeah. Okay. Well, just so many nice touches. Is, is that a stock radiator or is that a modified? So this is actually a stock radiator and I prefer that early look. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this is actually a triple core, uh, thin set core radiator. So on a hot day, this car still runs really cool. And you have an oil cooler right here. Correct. That's nicely done. That's obviously not a stock piece. That's an aftermarket, right? Yeah, yeah. We had to do a lot of cleanup there. Uh, and what do we that. have here? These two are... Uh, these are the breathers, because the one thing on uh, this car, uh, to make it race legal, you could take this and race this in VARA. Right. It actually has uh, a lot of safety features, and I have a, a fire extinguish, all the different things that you need to be compliant and legal from belts. Okay. So you race it. I, I haven't raced it, but I do plan on doing some track days, absolutely. Okay. I had one that I used to take, you know, out at Watkins Glen once in a while when I was in college, and, um, you know, it's, it's been a long time, so I'm looking forward Are to it Are you from back again. east originally? I grew up, actually, in uh, Buffalo, New York, yeah. Oh, I love Buffalo, Originally from here, but, yeah, that's where I grew up. Yeah, yeah, I love Buffalo. It's a great car town, Pierce Arrow. and Yes, that museum is wonderful, too. The museum is great. Yeah, the Pierce Arrow Museum is really worth a visit. Yeah. I think Buffalo once had more, at the turn of the century, had more millionaires per capita than almost any city in America. Yeah, absolutely. There's some fantastic architecture and museums there, too, as and well. And beautiful homes, because a lot of the timber barons were in Buffalo. So yes. they, they had all the best mahogany. Steel and timber and yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great set. And, and very good pizza in Buffalo. Yes. So, Absolutely. And a lot of Italians up there. But yeah. Yeah, okay. But enough about that. <laughs> enough about that. Very nice. Tell me about the suspension. What do we have for Sean? So we have a ground control suspension on this. Um, it's set firm, but not too firm. I like to have uh, a little bit of spring in the car, especially for canyon roads where right. this is mainly going to be used. Yeah, that's, you know, people make things so stiffly sprung. I kind of like Gordon Murray's thing. He makes road cars like the F1 rides really nicely mm -hmm. but it's so light you know it doesn't have to be i get some of these modern cars they got the recaro yeah. you know carbon fiber bucket and, <laughs> and, and i'm getting kidney punched every 10 minutes it's yeah like, you know please no yeah. I, I, I like something that's... yeah this is firm but um it's not what i call break your back from, you know hard our little vdo here yeah so that's actually for the speedometer okay so. Oh, is this a satellite? It is a satellite one, yeah. correct. Yeah. These are really cool. If you want to do away, because so many times you put a different engine or something in the car, and there's no mechanical connection to drive the, the speedo in the tack. Mm -hmm. So you do this satellite. I mean, when, when you go through a tunnel, it disappears. And right. Then, and it comes back right again. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, I experienced that up in Angeles Crest. I yeah, was but, like, it's, Wait. It's nice, but it, get, it gets rid of cables and you don't hear that you know yeah what, yeah, right. yeah so it seems to be working pretty good cool uh and uh i was cu we were curious uh if that was going to be the the best place for it and it seems to be working and this is your manual shock adjustment here is that correct 
Um, is that what these do? Yeah, so that can uh, deal with your camber, right? So you can oh. move that and, and set your camber. And yeah. uh, I believe these are the Coney shocks that are right. uh, in the Very ground nice. control suspension kits. This is actually my first ground control out of the many cars that I've had. Yeah. So pretty pleased with it thus far. All right, let's close the hood up sure. again. Let's see. Now, this piece is in here, correct? Yeah, I leave that in right. there just okay. to. We'll put this down again. Absolutely. Sometimes you might have to just push down a little bit on it and then just slide the pin in here. Yeah, there we go. These pin set holes were there when I got the car, so I figured I'd leave them there. And I love the interior. I love I love the the cloth insert and the in the I guess that's a plaid, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, that's beautifully done. Yeah, these are the uh, these are the Shield 300 type seats. I couldn't find the original Shield seats that they used on the Alpina cars. Right. So I had GTS make these. Well, those uh, look great. I think yeah. those are terrific. I don't know what the the other BMW seats look like, but they can't look better than this. So that's that's really terrific. Yeah. I want to make sure it kind of maintained period correctness. Right. And you got the drill pedals, which look great. Yeah. Even the drill gear shift knob, which is funny. Yeah. Yeah, that's one that you see a little more typical on Porsches, but I kind of wanted to add it to match that. Yeah, I always tell guys, you skip a couple of lunches and you don't have to drill the gear shift knob. You know, yeah. So. Very nice. And you got a full roll cage in it, obviously. Correct. Nobody's getting in that back seat anytime soon. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's actually a hatch, and that ha houses the. I can oh, open oh, it up I see. If you yeah, want to see no it. Yeah. yeah. It has the battery and fire yeah. suppression, and radio is actually in there. Yeah. Boy, a lot of thought went into this restoration. This, do you have two fire suppressions here? Yeah. One front, one back? Uh, or? Yep, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, and cool. um, yeah, the dash actually is a, is a nice feature. Uh, that is actually a CSL dash that's been cut down and modified. Oh, OK. And um, I, I have a partner that I work with on these builds, Shad Essex. Uh, noted that I really love the uh, dash of the early 1600s. Yeah. So uh, when we were coming up with this concept, he actually said, hey, let's do some mock-ups and, and uh, came up with the wrap underneath. And it actually has a functional glass bo uh, box, too. It has, a, excuse me, a glove box. So it's a fiberglass dash, but it has a lot of really nice embellishments on the um, aluminum pieces and all the knobs and that got rearranged. So it kind of looks like has that like maybe homologated uh, race car kind of look. No, it looks great. And I, I used to love the CSL coupes. Yeah, beautiful when I was cars. A kid. Uh, they rusted out. They were built by Carmen, I think, who did. Yes. That. So the, the build quality was not great. But I remember when I worked at the dealership, I had to. What we used to do was cars would come into New Jersey, and we didn't sell enough cars to put them on a truck. So I would drive them back, and they mm -hmm. would be test miles when the customer went, Why does this car have 212? Those are test miles. Mm -hmm. That was me you know, ringing the thing out on the freeway. But I remember that six cylinder, that CSL, that was the most turbine like engine I'd ever driven. Just so incredibly smooth, torquey. I just thought that was the greatest car. It had that terrific greenhouse. Yes. I mean, it was really just a fabulous, fabulous car. And every one I've looked at, they're kind of rotted out or been modified a little too much and yeah. stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I, I actually have a 70 CS, uh, 2800 CS. Oh, cool. Got, it's pretty solid, but it does need restoration. Yeah. And it does have a couple of those little gremlins that you yeah, mentioned yeah. about the Carmen body. Five speed or automatic? Uh, it is actually, it's a four speed, but I do have a, a five speed oh, okay. uh, for it to go into the car. So you're a BMW purist. You're the that, that's your favorite kind of car? I mean, it's the car that I that I know the most. I've actually had 40 of these cars. In 40? My time. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I've been, uh, I started, I got the first one when I was 19 and right. I kind of got hooked. And uh, when I used to live in the Bay Area where the, a lot of these cars live, I used to go to the mechanic auctions and the charity auctions and, and find cars and fix them up and uh, sell them as a hobby and a little extra cash. Did you ever have 40 at one time, or was it? Eight. Oh, eight at one yeah. time. I've it? curbed the habit a little bit. I only have four right now. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, that, well that's interesting. Yeah. Any completely stock? I mean, do you ever look to that, or do you always like to modify them? I prefer to modify them a little bit and make yeah. them fun you right. know, um, with these cars. And you don't have to go too far to have, have a fun car. Uh, I do have one that's stock. And, and that's also fun to drive and, and give an experience of the before and after. You know, there's something about this period 
I just like where all four wheels are the same size when the car sits. Sometimes big, big, big giant wheels in the back, small. It just seems, I, I like that look. You know, I, I have a very early Lamborghini Mura, and that sort of has four wheels approximately about the same. Mm -hmm. And just the way it sits, I yeah. like. Well, let's go back. You know, these were so practical. You had a full-size trunk. Let's show the trunk. Yeah, absolutely. Because these were considered a great family car. I mean, that's a big trunk. And you obviously got a fuel cell in there, very yeah. nice. Yeah, and as you can see, these are the fire sprayers back here. How many gallon is that? Uh, so this one here is, uh, I believe, an 11 gallon tank, but then, you know, you get the foam and that takes up almost a right. couple. So the uh, car, and I did fill it up here because you get about 100 miles with this. I know that I can go to Newcomb's Ranch and, and, and back to my house, so that's all good. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so you're going to get about 100 miles on a fuel, fuel cell? On this fuel cell, yeah. I could have gone with a larger what, one. What's it, about 12 gallons? Yeah, this I think is 11. 11, okay. Yeah. Well, wow, that is small. Yeah. Well, since you're not carrying a spare tire. Yeah, yeah exactly. So uh, it's also, as you know, proportional to your right foot on what your mileage is going yeah. to be. And obviously, as you said, it's so clear this is a rotisserie restoration, beautifully done. Did you have a lot of body rot in here? Because I can't see where it's been patched. Yeah, this was actually a very solid car. Um, there was very, I think there was a couple minute holes that needed to be addressed, but the whole car was actually soda blasted um, and then uh, rotisserie done for the whole prep. And I, I actually light scanned the whole car too, so I have a digital rendering of it. And what exhaust system are you using? This here is actually um, the Super Sprint exhaust, and I really prefer the exhaust on these cars because of the sound, the yeah. sound quality. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, is this a period exhaust? I remember the, all the magazines had exhaust systems for mm -hmm. these. Every bar, everybody. Yes. Is it one of those, or is it a modern interpretation? Uh, I believe this is a, a pretty period piece. In fact, this is actually the Alpina uh, exhaust system okay. uh, that they have out of the catalog. Because typically the exhaust would come out on this side here. Right, that's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. so we decided to want to move that and over there and make it look like it was factory to come straight out. And that's how they did it more on their race cars or the kit never, that you could buy back in the day. I never said why BMW, when they did the Alpinas, they made them automatics. Did they? I, like on the last. On the, the later ones, on the correct. The later ones. And I go, yeah, the Z8s. I mean, if you're buying Alpina, that. you want the sport model, don't you? You want the one. <laughs> Jay, I couldn't agree with you more. It doesn't make any sense, <laughs> yeah. I like you got the phony fuel cap on there. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, I added the locking one because last week somebody, after I uh, um, left Autobooks, somebody stole the, the old one I had. Really? Just took your gas cap uh, yeah. from Autobooks? Not from Autobooks. Oh. I went and saw, and um, visited a friend, and then I came out, and I was like, ah, my gas cap's gone. <laughs> wow. So I was like. Do you think they were trying to siphon gas or steal the gas cap? Good luck because, as you know, you no, no, got a fuel I mean, cell. Yeah, I don't know. I think because it was a, a new old stock vintage, really nice one that had the, the BMW printer on it and oh, uh, I cool. never take it off because you have to open the trunk to fill the car right and you oh I remember this I'm not sure if this is the first year maybe 72 was for the heated window that was like ooh. yeah that was like a cool option in New England that was like the greatest option because <laughs> you weren't out there scraping yes. it you know yeah, uh, yeah. I have to say, when I lived in Buffalo, uh, I did I did use it uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> California not so much very nice and okay kept rear bumper but not front bumper yeah i always like the chrome bumpers and the round i think 73 was the last year for the round tail light it right? was correct i don't know why they went to that square wasn't square it looked like a shoebox kind of yeah i just i it was not attractive I don't know. there must have been some government reason that it had a backup light or something else in it. Yeah, they had the bigger bumpers from 74 to yeah. 76 that they sold here, the US bumpers, they called it. So yeah. I don't know if that had anything to do with the design aesthetics. Sometimes kind of they do change in, just for the sake of change. You could get these new with air conditioning, I think, but it was like a third of the price of the car. Yeah, I believe um, that air conditioning, they, they didn't really sell that back in, in Germany. So that was more of an American right. thing. And I think Bear made it. And it yeah, was more of an right. aftermarket dealer installed package. Right, right, yeah. yeah. But if the, what was the car, about 3,300, 3,400? Yeah. And the yeah. air conditioner was like seven or 800. Yeah, I think it was huge. It was somebody yeah. somebody was like yeah, $800 like, adder. Yeah, crazy. So, and yeah, it was yeah. mediocre at best, yeah. right? 
Tell me about the wheels. Whose wheels are those? Yeah, so this is another thing that I really liked about the car to buy. Um, these are the old Compomotives, and I, I always loved these wheels, and I tried to buy a set. And with my friend up north, I had the running joke of one day I'm just going to have to buy the car, and 10 years later I did. Oh, there you go. Well, very good. Let's see the front. Boy, the grill's in nice shape. Is that your valance on the bottom? Is that an aftermarket? So this is actually a company called Coolworks uh, up north. And uh, this is one of the wide ones that they used to make. And um, I don't know if they make that one anymore, but it has always been my favorite. And then um, we added the Zeus fastener so that, you know, if you have to tow the car or whatever, you can actually just quickly yeah. take a screwdriver and take it off. And yeah, those fasteners are great. Yeah. They call them Zeus, but you spell it with a D. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I remember when I first went researching those many years ago. I'm like, why is it not coming up? Oh, got it. <laughs> yeah, and then you get the Mount Olympus and all this other stuff. No, <laughs> right. no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, 100%. Yeah. Well, can we take it for a drive? Absolutely. You'll be the first person to drive it outside of myself. Cool. Actually, that roll cage is not too intrusive, not too bad. One thing I like about the car. Should bring back some memories. Yeah. did a lot of mock-ups with that to make sure that everything would be right with the gauges. Because I agree with you. I don't like when you can't see the gauges. Right. Yeah, right stiff with the cage in that. And uh, there'll be a few things that I'll tune up. Well, it's not stiff. It's just right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's still what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, I like a car with a little bit of spring in it. I've driven a lot of these cars where people make them rock hard. And uh, I just it's really kind of kills some of the enjoyment of it. Great on a track, but for canyon roads. I like the drilled knob, yeah. it's nice. Yeah. You know, if I'm half a second slower, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like to build stuff and just move on to the next car, or do you keep them forever? Obviously, you don't. Um, I have one of these. Um, it's actually I, I a TII clone. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a bitey yeah. clutch. Not full race, but I went one under that. Um, I do have one that I've had for about uh, almost 20 years. Oh, OK. And that's just kind of a fun driver. Um, it's a really nice car, and uh, I just I enjoy that one for different reasons. But I usually end up fixing them up and selling them. This one, um, you know, when Chad and I were working on the build, really wanted to go next level on it. So I would say that you know um, would like to have some fun with it for a while. How do you like the CSLs? I, it's been so long. I just wonder if it's it'll be a huge disappointment after driving so many modern cars. You know, I just remember as a kid delivering them to customers with really comfortable seat, you know, and it, yeah. just that. I'd never s driven a six cylinder that was as smooth as that. Yeah. Or any engine, really, that was as smooth as that. Oh, the CSs are, are great cars to drive. Um, 
and uh, I've driven a few, and you can do a lot with them too. A lot of people, um, they get rid of the Zenith carbs and they'll put side drafts on it or yeah. a more modern fuel injection. And uh, you can really have a nice sporting touring type car. Yeah. And they can be made quick if you want them to, but I kind of like them as a nice sporting yeah. touring car. Obviously a little heavier than these. Well, I like cars in this car. area. You know, I've got a twin cam 63 Porsche Carrera there. Beautiful. And love those. the fun is just watching the tack meet the sweep. Yeah. I have so many cars that go, ring, ring. Okay, now I'm in jail. What happened? Yeah. What, what, you know, the yeah. tack's moving so, so quickly. By the time I look, I'm almost at eight, oh, but you, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's fun to, you know, drive a slow car fast, right? Yeah. But it's interesting, because that 63 Carrera, once you're moving, it's a fast car. Yeah. I mean, it can hold a nice pace. I mean, you can cruise all day with that tack pretty close to seven grand, and yeah. that's where it loves, it just loves that, you know. Yeah, yeah those roller bearing cranks they put in there, it's a, it's a really work of art, that motor. It's probably also a work of art to find someone to work on one, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. But beautiful car, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you kind of work on those, and yeah, I, um, you know, these cars are kind of a fishbowl with all the windows anyway. Yeah, I just never yeah. really felt yeah. the need that I had to have a right. sunroof, you know? Wouldn't shy away from a good car that had one, but I prefer not having it. But it's nice, you can run this car all day, and it, yeah. it doesn't get hot with that triple core radiator. Yeah, it really is, look at that. Yeah, barely. You got a uh, 160 thermostat in there, yeah. is that what's in there? Mm -hmm. You ever had any uh, experience with Evan School? Some experience with what? Evan School, the waterless uh, coolant. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear that stuff's great. Um, I haven't ran it on one of these yet, but I hear it's really good. Do well, especially that? with aluminum motors, you know. Yeah. I put in all my classics and stuff. Do you? Six. You know, my Packard. It, it's life of the car coolant. You pull it in a second. Got so, it. My Packard. Water pump is starting to leak. All right, you drain everything out. Pull the water. I pull the water pump out, and I notice there's a screw that goes into the shaft to hold the impeller on. Huh. And I think, oh boy, I'm gonna have to hammer this out or something. <laughs> I put a screwdriver, and I get a half a turn. Comes right out. Yeah, because there's no there's no oxygen. There's, hmm. You know, there's no rust. It's amazing. Does it work with cast iron blocks too? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, this was a cast iron block. Nice. I mean, a water pump was. Nice. It's actually how I came in this morning. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I uh, have a space at Whiteman Airport where oh. I store this. Is that where you keep the cars out there? Yeah. Can you work on them out there? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, Most airports don't let you work on them. Yeah, yeah half of it, yeah, they're, they still do, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of plane and car guys out there, and uh, I like it because you can go out there at any time, and it's, you know. Super cool. It's a lot of fun to drive. Yeah, right? The cam really starts to come on at 45 to 65. Yeah. You really feel it, right? You run over a dime, and you can tell if it's head or tail. You know? <laughs> I believe that. Yeah, it's nice. You feel the road. Right in these older cars. And young guys think it's so amazing. There's no power booster. There's no power steering, you know. Right. I always say this. Nowadays, younger guys think 3,000 pounds is a light car. Right. But these are what, 2,300 maybe? Yeah, 23, 24. Right. I'd put this probably somewhere between like 21 and 22. Yeah. It's, it's, it's had a serious diet plan. What brakes are in this? So uh, I have actually E12 brakes on the front with uh, vented and drilled rotors. And the E12 was uh, early 5 Series. Okay. 
BMW, right? Primarily this car is BMW, correct. Yeah. Just run regular premium fuel? Yeah. Uh, you know, you can run regular premium fuel in these and not have too many problems. Once right. you go into that 305 or 328 cam, then you gotta start running the 100 octane right. and all that. You might have lifter chatter. This is a nice all around cam, I think. Yeah. Oh, it's great. When I'm on the road, I'm just racing myself. I'm having a good right. time. You know, somebody, you know, one thing about the cops, if you're by yourself, they'll cut your break. If it's two guys dicing, you're screwed. I mean, exactly, you know, yeah. You know, let them go, hey, slow down, take it easy, you know. Yeah, I kind of like to drive my own drive and just yeah. enjoy the vehicle. There's racetracks for the other stuff. What was the first year, 67? Yeah, I believe they were selling them in 66. They kind of build it as like... But that was the 1600. 1600, correct. And then uh, a couple of the engineers um, on Falkhausen put uh, their two liter motors in their 1600s and they made a push for that. And I think Hoffman did too when he was selling them. And they started selling the 2002s and that really took off in the late yeah. 60s. It's loud, but not too loud. It's kind of, you know. No, it's it, not bad at all. It's manageable. Do you ever finish a car, or are you always just constantly? Yeah, I would say that this one here is uh, close to being finished. There's a few things left to do on yeah. it, um, as the car was just recently finished. But uh, I'm kind of happy with where it is, and you know, being a tinkerer and, and that, you always think about, oh, what else could I do to it? But I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. I wonder how many of these are left. Must be quite a few. Yeah, I think it depends on where you live. Like when I, I lived nine years in the Bay Area. Yeah. And they were plentiful, right? Because like you don't really need a car with AC. Right. Uh, you know, you're gonna be stuck in traffic and, and you can make the cars run really well and uh, drive it all the time. So there's a lot of them up there and um, they were kind of a coveted car, so. You know, Vintage Air makes a great unit that fits these. Do they? It doesn't weigh. I mean, it compresses like this big. Yeah. Smaller than your alternator. And it really makes the car so enjoyable. Yeah, I think on the next one, I'm going to do uh, air conditioning for sure. And, uh, you know, without having the Dynamat here. Right. You know, getting a lot more heat coming through the firewall. But you know, those vintage air units, you put on cold. Yeah. You don't need the dynamo. I mean, it's not, it's more than keeps up. It's amazing. I always wind up turning them down a little bit. Do you? Yeah, I might have to do uh, an upgrade, maybe. Yeah, it's interesting with these cars, because after I don't dry one for a while, say I'm yeah. it's on business trips and that, and then I get in one, it's like one of those cars, it just always feels like home to me. Yeah. Is this your first time in the passenger seat? Second, actually, yeah. But it is different. I've never gone this duration. Just did a test drive around the yeah. airport to kind of get some rattles out, you know, where I would jump around and check things out. Rock saddle on one seat. Well, Dorian, thanks for bringing this. It's really terrific. I've been wanting to do one of these for a long time, but just haven't found one I liked. And as soon as I saw this at the bookstore, I said, oh, this, this is the perfect one. It turned out to be true. Excellent. Well, thank you, Jay. I appreciate that you really liked the build oh, and yeah. enjoyed driving the car. Well, this is my childhood, you know? This is my first real experience with sports sports cars, you know, working at Barn Motors, you know? And I just got to drive everything. It's great. And was so incredible when they came out because everything else at the time was a compromise you know yeah they are wonderful cars I'll, I'll never get tired of them no i mean clean design still looks modern plenty of headroom plenty of leg room an actual trunk you know i mean this is a car you, if you're a young guy with a family you can have a sports sedan even today you can put kids in the back and yeah, that's a nice thing, you know? Even as a college student, I liked it that, you know, I could take it to a track or be utilitarian, throw things in the back and just uh, use this as my everyday drum. Well, keep up the good work, and whenever you build something interesting, let us know, we'll, we'll, we'll put it on the show. I would love to have you drive Thank the you next one, Jay. Uh, we will do that, thanks. See you guys next week.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>